The following is a production of Shark Flight Media. Shark Flight Media. Shark Flight Media. Shark Flight Media. From mechs to mages, or agents to argonauts, this is the world of Chris Kennedy Publishing. This is the CKP Future Books Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the May edition of Future Books. Uh, this month, we are talking to our wonderful publisher, Mr. Chris Kennedy, about the releases in the month of May. This month, uh, we're not going to have quite as many as we generally do, but boy, do we make up for quantity with quality. Welcome, Chris. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for having me. And and you're absolutely right. Uh, it's a, a little shorter of a month, but uh, lots of good stuff coming. Well, we, we kick off the month with our featured author and the story of uh, one of our most intriguing Depic companions. Uh, we're doing Companion to Darkness. Anyone who loves samurai movies, anyone who loved jo- Yojimbo or Kuwasaga movies, this is the book for you. I've read it. Uh, one of my favorite things that I've read recently. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, it's it's based on uh, he's written a couple short stories in in other anthologies with these characters, um, and and he brings them to to you know a full length novel, um, and and I've always wanted to know more about Zatahachi. Uh, I hope is how you say it. Um, but so so you know I I told him hey you need to write more you need to write more and he he finally did so. Um, you know, I, I like the story. It's really good. Um, and it's, and it's a little different than, you know, the, the standard, uh, 4HU story. So it's, it's good. I, I really, really like this. Can't, can't wait for people to see it. And, and I will say also, uh, Casey Moores continues to, to grow and develop as an author. And, and I think he's, you know, he's going to be just absolutely one of the best by the, by the time he finishes. Absolutely. Uh, this is a tremendous novel. It's a coming of age story. Uh, anybody who has a teenage daughter is going to recognize a <laughs> lot of, uh, a lot of situations in this book. Plenty of action. It's a great story on its own. It, it really did not have to be set in the Four Horsemen universe, other than the fact that the characters, uh, the, the aliens are aliens from Four Horsemen because this is a complete novel in and of itself. You don't need to have any backstory. You don't have to know the 22 books that came before it. This is a great place to get an idea, stick your toe in the water of Four Horsemen. Absolutely. It, it sure is. Um, and, and one thing that, that I think we do need to, to mention is that will be out on May 12th. Uh, May 5th, the, the first Friday of the month, is uh, an open date. Um, I, I have open dates once a quarter uh, this year just to uh, give give me a chance to to regroup if needed. And with all the the stuff I've had to do here the last couple of weeks, uh, you sure it, glad you you did that. I, I timed I timed this one perfectly. Uh, so you know it, we'll we'll uh, do some specials and we'll have something you know to to make it uh, worthwhile. Um, but it's a, a great chance to catch up on, you know, maybe one of the, the stories that uh, or the series that uh, people may have fallen behind on. I, I like putting out one a week. Uh, however, for some people, that's too fast and they get back, get behind and, and say, well, gosh, you know, how am I ever going to catch up? And I don't want them to, to, you know, go home sad that they're never going to catch up and drop the series. Here's your chance to, to jump back in. Yes, yes. Uh, Casey and I were talking about the fact that he would be um, a much more prolific author if you'd share your wormhole. <laughs> Neither of us can figure out how you get 30 hour days. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> sleep is optional, I guess. You know. And then on May the 19th, one of the best anthologies in the Chris Kennedy publishing pantheon is the We Dare anthologies. Uh, it seems like we've had one of these every year for a while now, and we're up to number five. Uh, what's the theme for We Dare Five? We Dare Five is old age and treachery. Oh, um, right up my ba- wheelhouse. It's- <laughs> it's based on that comment, uh, beware of an old man in a, a young man's, you know, profession. Um, so, you know, these are all pretty, they're, they're all uh, about, you know, uh, military people that are past their prime. 
Um, and, and it's told almost all of the authors are former military who are probably all just about past their prime. Yeah. We're all as good. Um, we're all good once as we ever was, but, uh, n- not as good as we once were. Yeah. Um, so, so these are all, you know, uh, the, the triumph of old age and treachery over the, the young, young and youthful exuberance. Absolutely. And I believe um, in that. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I do as well. And, and I've seen it way too many times to, you know, to, to not, you know, and it's and it's funny to see how, you know, the, the different authors use that, um, you know, as as the, the point of their story. Um, and, and there are so many good stories in this, uh, so many good short stories that I would love to see turned into long stories, um, you know, which has happened in plenty of the other books and, and probably should happen here again. Um, and, and I will say, uh, Jamie uh, was going to take four uh, open submission stories, but uh, ended up where uh, he he got it down to the last five, and he said, "I I can't I can't decide," and I said, "Well, let's let's embrace the power of and 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 we'll go ahead and take all." Uh, so we did. So this one's you know this this book is is a big book. It's uh, got lots of stories in it. I, I think it's fifteen rather than fourteen. I think it's about one hundred and fifty thousand words. It's it's a big one, um, and and they're all good. I'm looking really forward to this. Uh, the Weed Air novels are are the anthologies are some of the best things that, that we put out. And many of our long term series originated in, in a Weed Air short story. So uh, if you want to really get on the front end of, of maybe uh, some books you're going to want to read in the future or either make a mental note of, man, I love that story. I hope he expands on that. This is a great book to get. Well, you can you can look at the um, Peacemaker line in the Four Horsemen universe that started with a short story in an anthology um, and, and grew into an entire, you know, major series and subplot of the universe. Uh, so. So, yes, we have been very much known to uh, take short stories and run with them. Yeah, there's there's still some stories in the previous We Dares that I keep hoping that'll, that will, uh, <laughs> you know, be, be put in fertile ground and turned into a into a series of novels. So uh, I'm, I'm all about this. I can't wait yeah. for May 19th. You, you should shoot me an email and, and let me know which ones are, are we missing and, and I'll see what we can do. I appreciate that. And then uh, we're going to end up May. Like I said, it's a short month, but a quality month with uh, the Province of Danger, which is uh, a relatively uh, new series by C.S. Ferguson. This is number two, and it's going to be out on May 26th. And I really know very little about this series. So tell us tell us why we should buy this. (laughs) <laughs> you should buy this because it's different. Um, you know, for people that are like, oh, all the mill sci-fi, it's all the same. This one's not. Uh, this one is different. This one has a, a very genetic uh, component in it. Um, basically, people go to the stars um, and uh, there have been some genetic breakthroughs where people can make themselves better. Um, you know, of course, it's the people with the money that make themselves better. Uh, so it becomes a big issue and the government says, OK, all of this is illegal. Uh, so now the criminals have the genetic stuff. Uh, they can make themselves better, faster, stronger. And the, the rangers are tasked, you know, space rangers are tasked with uh, putting a stop to the illegal la- illegal labs um, where all of this is being done. Uh, however, the rangers are weaker, slower, you know, and, and less less strong. So uh, the the decks stacked against them. But wait, they do have a secret branch uh, that are better equipped and, and can jump in to help. And that's what one of the that's what the main protagonist is. However, the question is, they have better, but is it good enough? Wow, this sounds like because something I'm going to want to read. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 criminals basically get tired of losing labs to the the rangers and decide, you know what, we should we should just go ahead and win. 
they're they're less worried about you know uh, escaping from the the uh, Rangers, and they basically decide to take the war to the Rangers. And that's you know that's what you'll see on the on the cover of the first one. Just got the cover of the second, and it's got a uh, a criminal war machine on the cover, and you know so it's it's uh, bigger and better, bigger and better. And and I just I like this. I really really like this series. Um, it, it, um, has been a while, um, in process. Uh, Chris first brought it to me, gosh, several years ago and he had a, a massive book and, and we were trying to cut it down. And, um, we decided that rather than cutting it down, we would, you know, turn it into a series. Um, and, and he has worked his butt off to do this. And, and it really, really um, is outstanding. I love this series. Well, that, that will wrap up the month of May. Uh, June, on the other hand, is going to be a big month. We're going to have five. Uh, and there's going to be some Four Horsemen stuff. And there's going to be some print stuff. And uh, so May and June, uh, looks like July is going to be filled with great books. So, guys, hang on. It's going to be a great yeah, summer. There's- there's going to continue the the series of um, C.S. Ferguson series got another one. Uh, Steverson Old Hoff series has got another one. Got a new series from Nick Plume. Uh, got a, got a Pyatt book. Got a, a Fred Hughes Prince Liberator. You know, there's all sorts of great stuff coming. And then let's not uh, hesitate to talk just a minute about uh, even though May is. Uh, only three books. You have a ton of audiobooks coming out in the month of May, and all of them are tremendous blockbuster. They were great books. So if you drive, if you have long commutes, and you want to dip your toes into some of the CKP stuff, we've got salvage title books in May. We've got a new lunar free state in May, a fallen world in May. We've got some uh, fantasy from um, both John Osborne and Christopher Nuttall. Uh, so, you know, May is going to be a great month for, for yeah. listeners and readers. I just approved uh, Valhalla Awaits, which was the uh, sixth novel in the last Marine series by Bill Frisbee. Um, and the, <laughs> Funny we should talk about We Dare. I uh, proved the We Dare 3, the, the No Man's Land. Um, proved both of those yesterday, so those should be hitting probably toward the end of the first week of um, the first week of May, so they should be available also, as well as the, the ones you mentioned. Well, uh, this is this is great. Uh, let's talk a few minutes about... Yeah, you know, I, see, I think I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There should be eight releases in audio. In but it's going to be a big month for, for audio. Let's talk a minute about we're right in the middle of, uh, well, not in the middle. We're in the beginning of the uh, convention season. I know this year you're not uh, going to be on the road as much, but many of our authors are going to be at, uh, a ton of uh, conventions or have just gotten off of conventions. Uh, one of the wonderful things about CKP and the CKP authors is they're friendly. They want to meet you. <laughs> they want to talk to you. They want to show you their books. So, uh, you know, if, if you're traveling this summer or you have time that you have to take off of work and you've never gone to a science fiction convention, um, you know, uh, you can, we have lots of social media that you can, um, subscribe to, look at, and all of our authors say where they're going to be on our Facebook pages and on the website, uh, chriskennedypublishing.com. Um, you want to say a few words about our fan community and uh, how strong it is? Absolutely. Um, I know there were a couple authors at RavenCon last week, um, and I think the next one that most of the people are gearing up for is LibertyCon in Chattanooga in June. Um, and, and absolutely the, the authors love to, to meet folks, uh, tell you about what they're doing. You can be part of a number of different things. You know, if you're interested in the four horsemen universe, there's a uh, four horsemen, uh, fan club that, you know, dresses up and, and does cosplay and goes to the different cons Had a, we always have good showings at a variety of them. So, you know, if that's something you're interested in, go go talk with those folks, too, and, and find out if uh, 
joining joining a uh, the Merc Guild is something that's uh, for you. Yep, and then you can pick you up a crochet depic to to carry around <laughs> with you. Uh, uh, Mark's Mark's wife uh, is a artist with uh, crocheting, and she does some stuffed uh, stuffed characters of different types. And uh, you can pick up challenge coins. A lot of the authors will print some challenge coins for their mercenary guilds. So uh, there's a lot to do if you go to a science fiction convention and you hit the CKP booths. Absolutely. Anything else that we need to talk about this month? No, I think that's good. Uh, like you said, um, you know, there was it was going to be a, a short month anyway, with only four four weeks uh, this month. Um, but uh, it's it's a good one. Lots of great stuff. Well, I can't wait to read all of it, and I can't wait until we do this again in the month of June. Thank you for your time, Chris. You bet. Thanks a lot. So for the second half of the podcast today, we have Casey Moores, a prolific writer in the CKP universe and one of my favorites. Casey is a retired Air Force pilot who specialized in search and rescue and special ops. He has written in many of the CKP universes, the Four Horsemen universe, Fallen World, various anthologies, salvage title, and more to come. He has written a book called Companion to Darkness, which is my favorite thing that he's written so far. It's a tremendous book. It's a coming-of-age story. It is a, um, to me, when I was reading this, it was like a Kurosawa Kurosawa novel or a Kurosawa movie. It reminded me very much of Yojimbo. It is uh sad it's funny it's exciting uh the fight sequences are tremendously good tell me did did uh any of the japanese movies influence the the these characters and these stories that you wrote um yes of course they did um i'll say more than anything i i was a big uh japanese samurai slasher fan i love the uh Kage no Gundam, The Shadow Warriors. I was, I think I was brought into it by the movie The Shogun's Assassin before I realized that it was actually from a series called Lone Wolf and Cub. And then I went, I watched the entire, I have the entire Lone Wolf and Cub series, both on film and the graphic novels as well. So I have just torn through all of those. I was less familiar with Satoichi, but this goes back all the way to my first ever accepted short story, Blind Fury, which I also now use as a reader magnet, which you can now get off Amazon either for free by signing up for my uh, newsletter or off of Amazon for 99 cents. But uh, I had the original concept when Girl Casey asked me to write for that anthology negotiation back in God, was it 2018 or 19. I don't remember. It was way back in the in the early days of my writing. But um, she asked me to write for her anthology, and I was like, cat assassins that can turn invisible. I immediately thought to, actually, I had some background in uh, ninjutsu at the Air Force Academy. I was in the ninjutsu club and studied ninjutsu, you know, the art of ninja. It was actually a good combative martial art. It wasn't nerdy guys trying to be ninjas. It was a little bit of that, but, you know, mostly it was a martial combative martial art that I um, swear by. But... Um, As part of that, they have a concept of sake jutsu, the feeling of the energy, sensing of energy, sensing of the uh, opponent's intent. And that's what I keyed in on when I came up with my original concept for some sort of human interaction with an evil cat assassin, not an evil cat assassin, but, you know, the invisible cat assassins, the Deepak, the hunters. And that was the initial concept I came up with. I came up with Zato Hachi because I decided he was going to be a blind samurai in the Four Horsemen world, which is totally out of place, but, you know, there's reasons. And um, I spelled those out in Blind Fury. And I based it off of Zatoichi, though, as you said, it more became a little bit more like Yojimbo, a little bit more like, uh, what's his name, from Ogami Ito from uh, Slow Wolf and Cub. Then Zatoichi is generally a little bit more lighthearted. The subject matter is a little bit deeper, but Zatoichi himself is a little bit more lighthearted than I think Sato Hachi turned out to be. Um, for those that don't know, they're Japanese. Zato Ichi literally sort of sort of translates to number one Masur or Masur one. So I decided Zato Hachi is going to be Zato the eighth 
Zato eight. The, <laughs> um, and that's actually based on a uh, guy in um, Okinawa, a man, a, one of a wonderful sushi chef in Ocha, uh, Okinawa named Yoshi, Yoshihachi, which means the eighth Yoshi. And to take this one step further, sorry to ramble, but um, in Kage no Gundam, they do the same thing with uh, Hattori Hanso, who you guys might have heard the name of in Kill Bill, they used his name. Hattori Hanso does the same thing in that series. In each successive season, he's the next Hattori Hanso, so they just call him Hattori Hanso number two and Hattori Hanso the third and so on. And so I sort of rolled with that exact same concept in Zato Hachi, thinking eight Zatos later, here we are. I found it fascinating watching Blackheart slash Shirayuki being a typical rebellious teenager. The <laughs> angst between her, her mother, the uh, calming influence of Zatahachi, the the fact that ultimately their goals coincide, but they can't find common ground on the way there. That was that was some of the best writing that uh, that I've seen in a long time. I, I love the interaction and the the teen angst that just oozes through the book as you read the, these uh, confrontations between her and her mother. You did that extremely well. Uh, do you have teenagers? Uh, I have a twelve year old who's been a teenager since she was about a year and a half old. And you can feel every bit of that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, <laughs> from the time that she was about Shiryuki Blackheart's deep age, you know, they mature much younger. My daughter, she started speaking in complete sentences at eight, 18 months, and she was immediately out arguing us. <laughs> and she's been, she's been on that path ever since, and now she's 12. So you can totally feel, I, I totally intoned um, some of that experience into Blackheart. And I, I can say I had a lot more I, I had a ton of fun writing that half of it, and I loved the dichotomy that I created um, from half of the novel being a Japanese slasher classic and the other half interspliced with angsty teenager wannabe rock star. It, it sounds like you couldn't get those two to go together and tell a cohesive story, but it, it really, the last hundred pages brings everything together and you see you see how the what the puzzle is and uh the reveal at the end is wonderful the thing that stuck out to me and i want to know if it was intentional or did it just did the did, did this part of the story write itself or am i reading my own background into what you wrote there's a symmetry to blackheart's absolute unwillingness to to bend to her mother's will that I thought mirrored the Depic race's refusal to submit. They would rather die than submit to outside influence. And I think that is beautiful. Uh, it's almost fractal. You know, the small having, um, if you take her individual circumstance and then explode it into the... Um, entire population of the Depic, uh, you, you know, her individual defiance of her mother is, a, I think, a perfect representation of the Depic's absolute defiance of the Vitano. Did you do that intentionally? That is one of many layers. Um, obviously, I was playing off of the rebellious nature of a teenager. I was playing off the rebellious nature. The, I mean, even before the invasion of the Vitano, the Depic the child, the kits were already, you know, always, always sort of had that. I'm going to test these limits, and that was expected. That's always been part of the plan to develop them. They're always, you know, in other scenes attacking their parents if they can, or trying to attack one of their siblings just to see if they've, you know, if their skills have increased to the point where they can take them. Uh, and then, yes, there's the overall the rebellious nature of the Vitanho, I'm sorry, of the Deepik and how they which led to them standing up to the Vitanho in the way that they did, reacting to the Vitanho incursion the way that they did. Uh, and there was more I wanted to say, and I'm losing it now that I'm uh, stumbling through my thoughts. But the, like I said, there, there was a whole, there was a lot of layers going on to those, how Blackheart developed. Oh, and I'm sorry, the other part was, uh, I also sort of played off of the younger generations 
after a war has happened, after a major war, like after World War II, and actually even with among the Japanese, among the Japanese, the generations that grew up after World War II were very, very anti-war, very, um, I, I actually spoke to some of them and they were actually accepting of the nuclear weapon, the atomic bombs that we dropped on them because it broke them out of the cycle that they had gotten into. Um, and so they, they are very against those, the attitudes that have prevailed in the generations, the generation that went before them. And it can, and I sort of intoned that into Blackheart, this horrible devastation just occurred across her planet. Her race was almost entirely wiped out and she's rebelling against what she sees as the things that led to it. And, and it was done in such a beautiful way. And then at the, um, at the end of the book where the mother and daughter reconcile and the things that happened throughout the book, uh, the final negotiation, that, that was, that is some great writing and leads us to believe that, um, we're going to see more of Blackheart and Okeo in the future. Do you have plans for that? Uh, I want to say yes. I want to write more along that along that um i want to continue the those characters but uh i am very deep in this other project that i've been lagging on longer than it's it's been taking me longer we, we discussed this before uh it's been taking me longer on this project and it's also supposed to be a long running project that i'm very excited about and that's sort of that's your main that focus is, right now it's my main focus it's the reason there won't also there won't actually be another bull novel for a while it's the reason that I'm not going to be developing other projects that I'd like to be developing because I'm trying to focus on this one for the near future. So, Well, you need to get uh, with Chris um, Kennedy because I've come well, to the conclusion that Chris has 28-hour days. I can only imagine more than that. I, he's, he's, found <laughs> the, he's found that side pocket dimension where he can write and where time doesn't pass here or passes more slowly or something. It's too bad <laughs> that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't give out those bubble universes to his authors. I know the opening and the consequences of uh, the death of um, Blackheart siblings, Okeo ch Okeo's children. Uh, that was super sad, and uh, uh, some really powerful writing. Also, um, there there are sections in this book. This this book here has lots of humor. You know, it's you, you can tell it's a, uh, a Casey Moore book. But this this book has depth and sadness to it that I've never seen you write before. Did did you do that intentionally? Um, honestly, not really. And I'll, I'm finding more and more that every now and then I come up with something that uh, would serve me very well as an actor because I can think of some of these passages that I've written and I can really start and get teary eyed about it. I think the first time I saw myself do that was with my short and. Uh, the Salvage Title Universe, Salvage Angel. Mm -hmm. uh, just thinking about that story in general makes me teary-eyed. Uh, I did it again in The Gilted Cage. There's a few things, there's a few quotes by Kid in The Gilted Cage where if I say it out loud, I will be crying within by the time I finish the words. And yeah, I definitely did that again, the Companion to Darkness, a few times. And it was not intentional. It was just by the time I wrote it, I went back and I was like, oh my God. Uh. <laughs> that section and the section at the end... Uh, without spoiling your book, uh, the yeah. the portion of great sacrifice uh, brought tears to my eyes. Both of those sections were 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 powerful, and uh, I also give myself chills when I, you know, uh, for the audience out there, I rewrote the lyrics, and the, the the lyrics to uh, Joan Jett's "Bad Reputation." Mm -hmm. I have uh, Blackheart restate one of those lyrics in a completely different context at the end of the book. And that, that gives me chills too whenever I go back and think about that line. So you've got the top secret Ulta Delta, Delta Black Ops series that you're working on that we can't talk about. Other than that, <laughs> what's on the horizon for Casey in the next calendar year? Well, uh, within the next calendar year, uh, let's see, I'm going to be, I have a story in We Dare 5 that will be coming out actually the week after Companion to Darkness. I believe the release date is May 19th, if I'm getting that right. So that will be out. And, um, that's another witch doctor story for those that wrote, uh, read We Dare 4. 
I have my story in We Dare For Vocational Rehab. I just wrote um, a disability claim for We Dare Five, the continuing witch doctor's uh, journey. Uh, I have a my first story with Bain Books will actually be about so, be out sometime next spring in the third noir series. It'll be my first contribution to the noir series again because it's my first contribution to Bain Books ever. Congratulations! But, That's a great series to start in. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think it's one of the, the better doing the better um, performing anthologies out there, and and, uh, and I've just gotten some good feedback on my story, uh, Central After Dark which is essentially set in Albuquerque and a young man walks away from a vicious fight on his wedding night to wander down central at the dark hours of the evening and all that that entails. And anybody who's ever been to Albuquerque and driven down central at any time of the day can probably uh, see exactly what inspired me. I'm also, I just, I just submitted a story for the Car Wars anthology. Steve Jackson has re-released, has released the sixth edition of Car Wars recently. And we're trying to develop a novel series from that, that I, uh, my co-author for this secret series and William Joseph Roberts of Three Rabbits Publishing, they both invited me to contribute a series, uh, a story to Car Wars. I just finished that. I sent that off. The goal is for that to release by Dragon Con this year. Oh, that's great. And. So working on another Bane Books story. Um, we'll see how that goes uh, for the next Terranova series. Uh, that's not official yet. It has not been approved. So um, again, I, I don't want to jinx it, but I just completed that story. We'll see where that goes. I know I've also got a couple of stories and other anthologies that are out there, but I don't have any dates on those yet. Um, I think through one through three Ravens, um, and a, contrib- a couple contributions to another couple, uh, a few other places, but I haven't heard back from those yet. Um, so we'll see. Uh, novel wise, I will be contributing a portion to the next uh, Rogel novel with Rob Hampson and Sandra Medlock. I'm still, we're still working on the timeline for that. But as you said, I'm largely, largely involved in a near future military science fiction series that. Hopefully, I'll be announcing by Liberty Con. Um, I'm trying to complete the. My co-author wrote a novel to start that series. I am writing the second one. Uh, it should be a long-running series. Uh, hopefully, we'll see how that goes. But uh, again, I don't want to jinx that as well. So it's taking longer than I wanted to, but I think I'm just about there on my novel, and um, we've got plans to keep this going for a while. So well, I will say that I've read the first novel in the um, in the super secret series and uh i both am envious of you because of who you're working with in the series and uh super happy for you to get the series and uh i really can't wait for the second novel so um i can't wait till you can announce it publicly so that we can talk about it for our listeners uh where can people go social media wise to keep up with what's coming out and what Casey Moores is doing? The best possible place is my newsletter. My website is still a work in progress. It's been down for a few months. I got to get to my guy and talk about that. They've got a plan, but uh, they promised it a couple of weeks ago. And I need to sort of revisit that because I have a website, Casey, C-A-S-E-M-O-O-R-E-S dot net. But that is a work in progress. I re- I found out a couple months ago that all the links have failed and i um, trying to get that re- restarted. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under Casey Moore's Writer. You can follow me on Instagram. I use my Instagram, Casey Moops, C-A-S-E-Y-M-O-O-P-S, uh, entirely for my writing, or almost entirely for my writing news. I think I throw in a family thing every now and then. But uh, And also uh, Amazon. You can just look me up on Amazon, but make sure that you correct it when it said, did you mean Casey Moore with no S? You say yes, Casey Moore is with an S at the end. That S is confounding my entire life. It's uh, made my name unspellable, unpronounceable, and unfindable to most of the population of the world. It also makes you unique. That's true, too. There's only one Casey (laughs) Moore. And that helps a lot, too. (laughs) Well, I know you have a ton of... um writing to do 
and we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to talk to us. Uh, everyone, Companion to Darkness. This is a tremendous book. You need to get it and read it. If you have not read anything by Casey before, for the mere sum of 99 cents, you can go to Amazon and download the short story that um, inspired this entire book. Uh, and uh, get a taste of uh, what it is so that uh, you can see if you like it. But I can't imagine anyone who liked Kill Bill, who likes samurai movies, who just loves a good novel, will not like this book. So, uh, you know, spend your hard-earned shekels. You know, for $5, you're going to get at least 20 units of entertainment value. Casey, thank you so much, and I hope we can do this again when the Super Secret Project comes out. Uh, Randy, if I may add one thing, actually. Sure. Uh, something I forgot to sort of mention or emphasize is that this novel, Companion to Darkness, um, I believe it's meant to be the first in a Deepak Companion series. Oh, boy. So I believe that uh, Casey Azell and Marisa Wolf and some other writers, uh, I think the intent is to have several more of these Deepak Companion novels in the future. I don't know any of the details on those, but that's my understanding. Oh, well, then I'm super excited about that. That's uh, that is uh, that's going to be a great series because, uh, in my opinion, the the very best character in the Four Horsemen universe are the Dep are the Deepak. So uh, this uh, new companion Deepak pair bonding uh is is very intriguing and uh I'm, I'm interested to see what the the other authors and you can do with that thank you so much for for joining us and uh like i said i hope we can do this again when the super secret project comes out definitely thank you so much right, thank you Eddie. You've been listening to the CKP Future Books Podcast with host Randall Willis. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider leaving it a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you subscribe. Show likes and channel subscriptions are also much appreciated on the CKP YouTube channel. Finally, if you'd like to know more about this author or others on the CKP roster, visit ChrisKennedyPublishing.com. Thanks for listening to the CKP Future Books Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thank you.